Hard games have made a resurgence in recent years, and I've had a lot of fun with some of them. Largely, they also have the potential to just stress me out. On the occasions I do start a game on hard mode, I sometimes find myself toning it down even though I probably could finish it on that difficulty, just to give myself a better experience. I don't ask for TOUGH CHALLENGES TO LET ME PROVE MY KILLER GAMING SUPREMACY. Plus, when I recommend games to my friends, I find myself withdrawing recommendations for games with great stories but intensely difficult action. But with all my mixed feelings against hard games, I still ended up delving deep into one of the most challenging games I know, Fury. Fury, created in 2016, was an interesting game to me for a few reasons. While it's a very challenging game, it features an easy mode and even a relatively new invincible mode that lets players try the game with little or no challenge if they prefer. I think having these modes is always a positive, especially in exploration games where there's plenty to appreciate outside of the gameplay. But I also think the standard difficulty is rewarding in a way that's not automatically clear. Fury's challenge factor, designed to sometimes keep you stuck on particular bosses, feeds into its writing, providing appropriate levels of frustration, ambition, and even cognitive dissonance in order to immerse you in the intended feelings of the story. So a quick summary. Fury is a boss rush game. There are no standard levels, and not even any collectibles when you are walking between bosses. Your character, the Rider, awakens in a twisted space prison, and is told by his only friend, the Voice, that the only way to escape is to kill the nine jailers in his prison. You have a sword and a gun. You can slash, parry, shoot, and dodge. Fights are divided into life bars. You get three life bars, and you can recover one bar and refill your current one if you deplete one of the opponents. If they empty your bar, their current bar refills and you must restart it from scratch. This breaks fights into distinct phases while giving you multiple opportunities to retry a phase if you didn't do it so well. Since challenge is a part of the story that Fury aims to tell, they make some effort to make it accessible. In a lot of action games, it's pretty common to spend some portion of a fight against a new enemy either playing defensively or dying to work out all of their attack animations. Fury tries to minimize this recognition time. The game reuses a good number of attack styles like big lasers or homing projectiles across each of the bosses, and they maintain a distinct visual style. Big, sweeping attacks mark the area they're going to hit with just enough time for you to react, and melee strikes are all preceded by a signature chime. This doesn't make the game easy, but it means that you'll be experiencing the test of reactions other games live by, without having to go through their trials of working out exactly what this roar animation means. So, from here on out, this video will contain spoilers. If you're a hardcore gamer that invites challenge and likes a good boss rush, I highly recommend you stop here and try Fury out. It's available on Steam, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. If you're a more relaxed gamer that plays games for any other reason, and you dislike having to retry hard fights again and again, this video is for you. I'm going to be going over the difficulty curve towards the ending of Fury consisting of the last three fights in the game, and what effect it has on most players. This isn't the same as experiencing it yourself, but it'll probably also tell you more than simply watching someone else play through those fights, especially if they've edited out their losses, or they're such an experienced gamer that they didn't spend long on each fight. Okay, last chance for spoiler warnings. Throughout the prison, the variety of jailers shifts a bit. They start off twisted and monstrous, but some are more human and believable, often appearing as heroes. Angels, wise men. Some come across a bit condescending considering your lack of memories, but the general impression is that they see you as a blight upon the world. I'm here to protect all that I believe in. You must listen to reason. The voice tells you during your adventure They didn't kill you already because they can't. Believe me, they would if they could. Whatever you are, you cannot be killed, only captured. So these nine jailers committed to staying in this prison to make sure you don't escape. 
Uh, kind of disconcerting, right? But it's not like you have much choice. You don't deserve to be locked up. If there was something you did wrong, you don't even remember it. And you don't even want to hurt people. You just want to be free. That's not so wrong. But you've got to move on now. Don't overthink it. That's what they want you to do. You might form some empathy, or wish to understand the characters you're fighting as you move on, but you'll have no empathy for boss number seven, The Burst. A sniper, armed with a cloaking device and an army of drones, she mocks your very effort to face her, and her fight is one that many players will get stuck on. The game has steadily escalated its use of various attack patterns, and The Burst uses just about all of them, luring you into hunting her down on a large open map, summoning drones to keep you busy as she snipes you down, and taunting you at every opportunity. She even mocks you during your success, as though your failure is inevitable and she's just toying with you. That was a really good try, but not quite good enough. Every time you lose the fight, the voice re-encourages you, appealing to the idea of destroying her ego, what players in the fighting game community tend to refer to as salt. It's a terrible term. But that's how you'll feel by the end, having to repeat segments like her sniping chase and avoiding some of her highly difficult attacks. You want to see the look on her face when you win. Hearing that twinge of frustration in her voice as she delivers her final all-out attack and just fails to hit you again and again can twist your emotions from disdain to drive. This is my moment. I prepared for it. You are not taking it away from me. I can't fail. This is my game. So you're a player who has just managed, finally, to beat the Burst. Shutting her up is cathartic and very satisfying. And the voice even says afterward, eh, she was a cheater anyway. But nevertheless, you're tired. All this bullet hell, all these simultaneous things to look out for, and there are two boss fights left to go? Who knows how long you're going to be stuck on each of the remaining ones if this shit is just going to escalate. This is a problem for the game's designers. They can't just give you more of the same at this point, since any mortal player will have spent a long time on the burst. There's real worry that for the next boss, you'll give it a few attempts, get even more tired, shut off the game for later, and never remember or never want to try it again. So that means it's time for a change of pace. You sure took your time. I was concerned you wouldn't make it this far. Boss number eight is The Edge, a samurai who spent his lifetime preparing for this fight. Oh boy. So it's only going to get harder, right? Well, The Edge is hard, but he's different. Let me show you. There's no more bullets. No more big, complex, simultaneous attacks covering massive arenas. Every round, you skip straight to the melee fight that's normally the finisher of a life bar. But the edge demands excellence. Every attack is just a bit faster than normal. Some are harder to recognize than before. And every failed parry, every bad read, screams your health bar towards zero far faster than normal. But the opposite is true, too. The Edge can't survive many strikes, and it only takes a few good reactions from you to end one of the four rounds in your favor. And yet, even so, you will fail. And fail and fail again and again. At this point, it's reassuring that it doesn't actually take very long to beat one portion of his health bar. And yet, you'll likely be stuck here a while. You need to keep recognizing new attacks and get good at dodging or blocking each existing one. Any times you might have relied on just tanking the hit for a particular attack you could never dodge aren't going to work anymore here. You don't have the spare life for it. But there's something about his banter going back to you that keeps you coming back. Come on, get back up. You can't give up now. He's encouraging. He wants you to improve yourself. He actually wants you to beat him but he wants you to earn every last strike it takes. 
There's no more condescending bullshit about how you don't understand what you're doing, or how you're killing puppies by trying to be free. He respects you. But before you can move past him, he demands your respect. I want nothing but your very best. You have more strength than you think. Try to stay with me through this. You have it in you. Get it out. I want to see you shine. Nice. It seems like we're fighting each other. But we both know we're fighting against ourselves. <laughs> Do I look unconquerable to you? Each of the names of the tracks in the game usually comes from a dialogue quote from before the fight, but it says a lot that the Edges fight theme, something memorable, comes from one of the Lost Round lines. Come on, give me something memorable, something I can learn from that will make me better. Fighting the Edge presents a huge contrast from the really rude behavior of the Burst and the obnoxious antagonism from the other Guardians. Something memorable describes it perfectly. Not just from the dialogue, but the combat. This is where all the skills you've already practiced have to become refined and disciplined, where button mashing turns into methodical play. Going back to previous fights after trying this one might even show you how much it's helped you grow. You might have to retry the whole fight quite a few times, but eventually, in a fight that individually only takes about 5 minutes per attempt, you will win. This next cutscene has a few surprises. One, no death speech. The Edge dies. You killed him. It's what you came here to do. Still, it's weird to think you wanted to hear more from him. Next, the voice says this to congratulate you. And he was probably the toughest one in here. Wait, the I could toughest? You. We're not done. Don't bosses normally go from easiest to hardest? Now again, at this point, a lot of players, they're tired. They're thinking, man, the Edge has taken dozens of attempts to beat. I don't want more bullet hell magic tricks covering the screen. And as cool of a challenge as it was to have that awesome sword fight, I don't want more of that. Not now. But I mean, we've come all this way, and I'm curious about what this final boss fight is, especially after the voice's statement about them not being the hardest one. I don't really expect to have time to finish the game tonight, but I'll give it one shot, just to see how it is. So now, we're preparing to fight the last guardian in the game. It's been a long journey. But it's now time for you to be tested on everything you've learned over the entire game and push yourself to your upper limits. Just one more epic battle and you'll attain everything you've been searching for. Prepare for the final challenge. Can you beat the beat? You're not what I was expecting. Yeah, likewise. Once again, the beat feels different. We're back to a lot of the attack formulas used during previous boss fights. Big lasers, waves of shots layered over each other, homing shots, but not really anywhere near as intense as the other bosses. And the game also generously lets you retry one of her health bars from after these little platform dashing segments, meaning you have a little less to do after a failed round. You're coming off some of the hardest fights you may have had in any video game, so this is enough to keep you actively anticipating each attack, fighting on your toes. But while this occupies the front of your mind, the back of your mind is thinking, something's not right. She, like the other jailers, sees you as a threat to the world that has to be kept here. She's insistent during the fight about the importance of her mission, but she doesn't have the confidence or cocky force of will that many of the others have. Go back. Go back. back. Fall back, please. She wants to be a hero like the others. But she's not a hero. What you slowly process only after this fight has concluded is that this measly assembly of lasers and scatter shots, this is her all. This is her giving everything she has against you, and you're not even challenged? 
This is pure brain-dead muscle memory for you. And everything she's fighting for is slipping away health bar by health bar at high speed. This is the last fight! What the hell is going on? The beat might have been a slightly challenging fight at the beginning of the game, and you could almost say her timid lines feel similar to the mood of players starting out on a game rumored to be ultra hard. Look at you and I don't understand. We're so alike. But you've become so hardened, you're so used to exposing every offensive opening, that in the heat of the moment... <laughs> it's over. This is it, my friend. It's been hard, I know. But she was the last. Finally, going through that door, it's everything we have been fighting for. This is wrong. At this point, your thoughts come back to the reasons you first started fighting your way out. Your imprisonment was never right. Maybe you're not innocent, but you don't aim to do harm to anyone now. It always had to end this way. If she hadn't died, everything else would have been for nothing. But would it have killed you to grant her dying request? Please, hold my hand. Well, we have what we wanted. Sacrificed what was needed. Time to make the most of it. That's it? Wow, that's disappointing. I'm free, I guess, but holy shit, I'm killing everything, aren't I? Like all the grass? Wow. Yeah, that's one hell of a downer ending. Oh, actually, so hang on. Is there a good ending that I didn't get? Wow, no, this is it. <sighs> this sucks. This is not the ending you were hoping for. You didn't end on the challenge of a lifetime defeating an insurmountable foe. You're a human oil spill that writhed its way out of containment by stabbing a little girl to death. This... This just fucking sucks. Now, I'll tell you a secret. The game bakers have a little bit more to show you, but they absolutely knew what they were doing. They knew you would not leave. After all, you had to earn your way here through blood and tears. If these were the credits to Assassin's Creed 27 or Monster Frog Hunter World, you'd have already skipped through them or even just shut off the game at this point. Oh. Did you guys need a fifth for seeds? Yeah, I'm done with this game now. No! This is fury. If you've made it here, the game absolutely has your attention. The designers and writers know what kind of cognitive whiplash you're going through. While you might skip cutscenes, you cannot skip the challenge and the heartache of beating this game. This game's ending is leaving you wanting more. And while it would be absolutely insane for any major publisher to put more than a chocolate chip cookie's worth of content past the end of the credits, the game bakers are baking a goddamn wedding cake. Alright, so it's letting me cruise around after killing everything at my feet now? I guess I might as well explore around here. Nothing's really interactable. I can get this cool conversation with the voice, So I now guess. you know. You were my only chance. Uh, I, I don't really understand what he's saying. Wonder if I can go in this tower. Wait. Acquiring rider. Resuming flight plan.
Welcome back, Ryder. Let's see your report on your target planet. Uploading planet report. Results inconclusive. Proceed with manual confirmation. Confirm planet assimilation. What the fuck? So now you know. I hoped it would change you. I think it did. What does matter is what you are going to do. Okay. Fuck. You. So I actually lied, this video is about the last four boss fights. Meet the true final boss of Fury, the Star. And some bad news, he's actually even harder than the Burst and the Edge combined. But screw that! You are motivated now. This is not some noble hero you are tragically forced to kill. This is not a turkey shoot against Canadian Lucio. This is a fight to the death against an evil-ass fucking Borg space demon from hell who wants to drink up a planet full of proud warriors and innocent people like a fucking pina colada. And the best part? He never saw you coming. Ryder, you have changed. Why is that? Hold on. That's a good question. The star asked me to kill the evil race who had imprisoned and tortured me. Why would most players so suddenly choose to switch sides? Now is a good time to recap something here. The burst was a difficult fight to the point of frustration. I'm pretty certain that if the star had simply been Jailer number 8 before the escape, I might have given up and gotten tired of the game. So in this case, Fury's story was used to solve a gameplay and pacing problem. And it's solved even for players who had mostly been ignoring the story, because they're largely telling it through gameplay. Getting players to care about characters, damsels in distress, plot devices and allies, enough that they become truly motivated, immersed, and driven to do these extremely difficult things is hard, especially when you're trying to tell it to someone who just wants to play a game. So that one moment of massively disproportionate odds where you're beating down on someone who's just as doe-eyed and helpless as you were at the start of the game kind of reaches you. Your mind is active and processing of everything that happens during the fights, but is pretty disengaged, more like a spectator when the cutscenes start. And by giving you this twisted feeling of injustice, Right before the game gives this massive but kind of hollow region of freedom and a big choice, they know that you're going to pick the action that speaks to justice and see it through. And what proved this out the most, at least for me, is that there's actually one more fight available as DLC for the game, but much as I thoroughly enjoyed the main game, I just never quite worked up the motivation to play it in a manner that was totally disconnected from the story. Now as I've said before, Yuri's story is tied into its difficulty. You probably won't get this whole emotional roller coaster or get the full effect of it if every boss takes just one try or if you're watching another person play. A lot of those lines that the Edge keeps saying to you every time you lose, you're really meant to hear. Some people would take this to mean that this sort of experience can only be enjoyed by players that are skilled enough to play it in its current form. I disagree. I don't see a strong reason to exclude people from a unique experience, even if the challenge is a part of that. In fact, I think it's great that Fury's designers made efforts to provide an easier difficulty to possibly widen the number of players who can experience it. I do think challenge is a big part of the experience, but I also think challenge is subjective, and someone might struggle just as much as I did against the Edge, even playing on easy mode. There's also, generally speaking, many games that don't gain as much as Fury by implementing extreme difficulty. A simple, easy-to-play power trip is all I need some days. Finally, if this video was your first experience of Fury's story, I hope you enjoyed watching. Oh, come on, D-Rank!